you hit the lottery, you got this amount right. of money. But that's all this is know, the dollar bill. It's that people hit the lottery, man. They say what eighty five percent of them people go broke again yep. within two three years. Yep. Welcome to the player now. Well, we keep it raw, real, and uncut. You never know who gonna come through. Players only. Stay tuned. Yo, it's your boy Lou. Welcome to the Players Lounge. And today, I got a very special host. A long time dear friend of mine. And happened to be one of the best running backs in Auburn University history. And happened to be one of the best Miami Dolphin running backs in history. I'm talking the number two pick of the 2005 NFL Draft, Mr. Ronnie Brown. And now Miami sends Pennington out to the perimeter again, and it's Ronnie Brown. And they continue to gash the Patriots. Ronnie Brown is gone. Touchdown, Dolphins. So what's up, Ronnie B, baby? Welcome to the Players Lounge. How you feeling? Bro, I'm just coolin'. Same cool. old, same old. I like being treating you, man. Man, I can't complain. No complaints from me. I can complain because you ain't gonna win this game. Last <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time you beat me at pool? Man. Doing these pool battles, you know, I'm, I'm normally the one that, on, on top. You know what I'm saying? So B, let me ask you a question, man. We was at Harvard. And you had an okay year, your junior year. What made you decide to come back and not leave and go to the NFL, but to, uh, to come back and pursue your degree and finish school? What, what led to that? What led to your decision to do that? Because that's a, that's a big time decision. For me, you know, I mean, I mean, just was what it was. I wasn't the main dude on the team, so mm -hmm. you know, coming out of that season, I was, you know, I was doing all right, but I'd already graduated, mm -hmm. you know, that season. So coming back as a senior. I wasn't gonna have any classes, so I was debating if I was gonna work on a master's or whatever. So, you know, only thing for me, football related, I could only improve my stock. They gave me a third, fourth round grade. So, I like, if I come back, you know, we came in and I had the same nucleus of guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Jason Campbell was my roommate. We came in the same class. Shout out to Jay Camp. Yes, yeah, so we had. It was real dope, man, to, to see somebody on your statue, you know, come back for your senior year. That was pretty big. Do you think that ultimately led to your success? I think it played, a, senior year. I mean, it played a huge part. I mean, obviously what I did on the field my senior year, you know, it kind of trumped everything else I did and it gave me the ability having lack, you know, to show what I could do in terms of catching the ball out of the backfield, which I think was a big factor because when I went, you know, to the combine, that was a big part of it. And then I ran a, you know, fairly decent time. So come on, bro. Come on, bro. No, you know? Come on, bro. You can't hit me with the fairly decent. <laughs> I mean, it you know, man, but, this man ran a 4-3-2, am I right? 4-3-8, four, four, three, three, four, three, but it was 4-4-4. Four, four, four. I gave him some of that, my dog. But 4-3-8, unofficially at 235 pounds, man. Hey, bro, I, I need you to give me the blood raw, right to be on the green room, Mr. Ben. The call. When you realize, when was the moment that you realized you could possibly be a top 10 pick? I mean, I think the realization came when I got the invite. Like, what did so that feel like, bro? After the combine, I was like, you know, I, I felt comfortable. With me and Lack went back to Auburn, uh -huh. we hung out a little bit, and then, you know, coming up to the process, I got the call from my agent, and they was like, they want you to come to New York for the oh, draft. What right there, Ronnie? Right there. I need to know, cause I got a baby brother play sport. I need to know what did that feeling feel like when you got that call, because then you knew. You was a million now, bro. Yeah. I ain't I ain't even think of it like that. No. Like to be honest, I ain't I was nervous. I ain't wanna go. Like uh -huh. he had to talk me into going because, you know, like you look at it and I was looking at our senior season, but mm -hmm. all the guys who, you know, have been on TV and getting all the, the accolades or getting all the, you know, the praise and stuff, mm -hmm. I was looking at them, I'm like, man, I ain't trying to be one of them dudes that's gonna be last in the green room. So, you know, I was like, man, I appreciate it, but I don't know. He's right. like, nah, bro, you should go like you know, if they invite you, they must know something. So, you know, finally I agreed to it and, and we went to New York for the week. It was an opportunity. So, you know, a lot of people say, man, it ain't about the moments, but more so the moments and the people you get to share them with. And, you know, hang out in New York for a wow. week. 
with my folks from Cartersville. Can you give any advice for the old boy going into the 2018 draft right now? I think the biggest part is don't get lost in the in the sauce, pretty much. Like, is it is it hard is it hard to be fresh if you don't have money or can you still pull it off? See, when I ain't had no money, I still had sauce. Mm -hmm. So if you don't got no sauce, then you, 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 you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you also get lost in the sauce. Enjoy the process. Like it's an opportunity for you to live out a dream. So don't get caught up in your draft position. Yeah, it's a blessing to get drafted in the first round and. You know, but more importantly, it's more of a, a blessing to get drafted at all or just to get the opportunity. Those are tools to success, man, for the NFL draft, man. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's my Duce got me sweating. Word to God. What you boy? To the players now, man. Right now, we're gonna have some more talks with my man Ronnie Brown, man. Just know, little do say and chat, chill, you know, just chop it up a little bit. So, Ronnie, just to step a little bit off topic, man. Everybody that comes to the players now, I would like to ask them about this one player. This is the best player in the planet, and you know this, everybody knows this. LeBron James. I have to ask everybody who comes to the basement, who is better? And I need a real, legit answer. Who is better? Michael Joy, LeBron James, or Kobe Bryant? I mean, you, it, it got, it's our perspective, one, Everybody gonna have their opinion, so you know you can't get excused. Like there's no right or wrong answer. But for me, you know I I gotta go with Michael Jordan. And the reason I say that, you know obviously people say numbers speak for themselves. But when you look at the first person to ever do something and consider the goat, like all the stuff that he accomplished, and when you're the person that everybody's shooting for, like whether you're looking at LeBron or Kobe, their whole motivation was Michael Jordan. So. Mm -hmm. How can you be better than the guy who set the standard for what you're trying to be? So for me, I, I got to go with Jordan because all those guys chasing his his mold and how he did it. Like, you know, Kobe went from the way he was chewing his gum to trying to emulate the man in every fashion. And then you get LeBron, you know, that was his idol. That's the, you know, that's who they want to follow. Like, they want to be like Michael Jordan. Like, hmm. and everybody know who it is. So last, last question about basketball and we'll move on. Who you pick is to win the uh, championship this year? Well, who's gonna go in the Western and the Eastern? You give me the finals right now. Your pick. You Who know, um, Golden State a well oiled machine, and they've been there before. Like mm -hmm. they got experience from the coaching staff all the way through the players. So they've been there. They won it before. You know, I think the thing that might hurt them is Steph Curry. You know, whether he's in or whether he's out. Mm -hmm. Like I think that question. Totally different team when you yeah, got it's, it's, that that question kind of messed up the magnitude of the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Like, because if you think he's coming back, then guys' role kind of switch, or you try to adjust your role mm -hmm. accordingly. And then on the Eastern Division side, like, I think this with the Pacers and 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 what Cleveland had going, this may be Cleveland's toughest task on this mm -hmm. side. Like, I like Philly, but mm -hmm. more importantly, like, I just think the way that this matchup was for Cleveland, I think they're gonna get out of it. They're gonna get out of the East. Let's let's go back. Let's jump back into your career. When you play ball, right? I know I, I respect your marriage and I respect your family, I respect everything in your household. But can you keep can you can you let the world know or, or the people know, your fans or whatnot? What what kind of what are the distractions that comes with being a high profile athlete, having that target on your back, being a handsome guy? Uh, everybody pulling at you. Everybody wants something from you. You know, you got a lot of money. You got fame. You got popularity. How hard is that on the athlete, on the player? I mean, if you keep it in perspective, like that's probably the hardest thing. It is to juggle because one, you got to be good. You got to be good at your respected crowd, mm -hmm. and everybody watching you do it everybody. every Sunday or Monday or Thursday. Yes, sir. Like, everybody. So when you just say for a quarterback. Everybody know when you make a mistake. So mm -hmm. for people to be able to critique your job on a weekly basis, you know, I think that's tough. And dealing with 
you know, the pressures of being successful, you know, and trying to be able to go in and create a lifestyle of, you know, a livelihood, you know, that's the pressure. And then, you know, the stuff that people don't take into account for, like, what guys have going on outside the game, like the family structure, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, the background of the family, like how the family's involved, you know, all that stuff, having mentors and people to, you know, help you along and make decisions along the process, like that stuff goes a long way. And then also having guys inside the locker room who set a good example. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of distraction. And even now, this social media age, like everything you do, everybody got a camera. I don't care if you're in the club Man. or, you know, you're doing an appearance. Like somebody going to put you on social media to yes, do something. So you the pressure that. to try to do everything the right way all the time. Trying to be let's be social issue. Now in today's world, I'm gonna be honest with you, Ronnie. Every time I get in my truck, I am nervous. Not only nervous, I'm low-key scared. Because if I see them lights behind me, I don't really know what to do, bro. I don't know whether I should keep going until I get somewhere safe where there's a whole bunch of people there. Pull up, I don't know what to do because I could that could be my last night. No matter how you play it, I done seen so many instances where you done everything right and still got killed. Uh, you talk back, got killed. Uh, they thought you had a, a gun when you had a, a phone and you got killed. What do you do, bro, when you just get pulled over for a taillight? Like? Yeah. So, in my mind, I, want, I would like to know how does a, a, a brother of your magnitude feel in this world, being that you're not really in the inner city, but you're in a good part of town to where... It might not affect you A1 head on, but you, you do see what's going on. How do you feel about what's going on with the, you know, with the pro police brutality going on against? I mean, just what you feel about that? I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, I think, you know, one, first and foremost, like me being a young black man myself, like, I can understand. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a right answer for it. Like, I don't, like you say, I don't, there's no right answer. Like, right. what do you do? So. You know, even for me, like, that's one of the fears, like, if you get pulled over, like, how do you handle that? You know, you try to abide accordingly, but then at the same time, there's still no guarantee for it. From the, the policeman, you know, um, obviously not being comfortable with actually dealing with somebody of the other race, you right. know, and I don't know how you bridge that gap. But then even in the, the black community, um, our thought process of how we think about the police, like, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times, you know, the no snitching and all that stuff. It's like mm -hmm. people don't even want to relate to, you know, being associated with the police. Whereas growing up, it used to be cool to want to be a policeman or a fireman. Like now, it's, you hear kids, I want to be an athlete, I want to be an mm -hmm. entertainer. So, you know, that's not a, a job that's looked at in the, in the proper light. So I think, you know, you got to do a, they got to do a better job of cleaning it up and uh, the image of being a police officer and what Definitely. they stand for um, and how they patrol the community because they are supposed to be there for the community. Right. And at the same time, if you get somebody who's never been in the community and don't understand how the community works, mm -hmm. of course you're going to be fearful when you go in there because like, right. you don't understand how people think and there's no interaction. So that's right. why I like seeing the police officers who go in, mm -hmm. who play basketball with the kids, who mm -hmm. understand, you know, and try to get a chance to learn them on a first name basis or mm -hmm. just being involved in the community because that's the area you, you know, you're supposed to be taken care right. of. But right. at the same time, you know, we all got to do a better job of making sure we do put ourselves in better situation. But there's no perfect answer for it because, I mean, um, unfortunately, we've seen if you do the right thing, it ends up on a, in a bad note. Mm -hmm. You do the wrong thing, you still end up on a, so, you know, I think it's just about knowledge and people opening up, trying to get the image right of the police officers, uh, for them to do a better job of how they police the neighborhoods and how they interact with the people in the community. And then, you know, the stigma that, you know, how you view the police, like, but that's gonna come along with mm -hmm. them changing the image and cleaning it up and being involved in the community, riding through the community, not just at night or not just looking for something negative. Right. Like they gotta be in there with Actually something trying positive. To benefit. And you know, that's what they supposed to be there for, like mm -hmm. to be that positive role model, but also to create that safety uh, net for, for people. Mm. Man, y'all heard the first in the players line, man. That's that's a great thing. Maybe, hopefully we got some cops watching. We got some fans watching, man. It, it, it's really on us. It's really on us to, you know, take charge and take change into that police brutality and uh, black on black crime, black and police, all that stuff, man. It's just, you know, we gotta we gotta kill hate with love. But um, 
Last thing I want to ask you, Ronnie B, man, I'm going to let you go on home, get on up out of here. Take me through a day in the life of Ronnie Brown now. You know, you're retired now. You know, been out in the league a few years. Take me through the day in the life of Ronnie Brown and what you got going on now that, you know, some of your fans out there could, you know, maybe reach out to you, support you, whatever you got going on. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they would like to know. So what, what's the day, in the, the day in the life of being with Mr. Ronnie Brown? I mean, for the most part, you know, I'm a pretty chill guy. Um, mm -hmm. But life after football, it, you know, I feel like that was a part of me, but that's not who I was totally. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had goals and ambitions outside of that. So being on the other side of it, being married, got two kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's first and foremost for me. Like mm -hmm. um, being able to take care of that and create, you know, that family atmosphere. But then outside of that, you know, my individual goals, I'm back in the workforce. Um, Join the corporate corporate world, um, you know, getting into financial advising, um, you know, trying to get licensed for all those things. Mm -hmm. So I can be one of those guys that can reach in and give back to the young athletes and, you know, That's for them dope. to understand. That's dope. You know, bro. I understand being on that side of uh -huh. it, like I've been through that. And I understand how you think coming out of it, how to deal with those pressures along with making the mistakes um, of going through it and spending money. So if I can help those guys how to do it better and create a... a a better life for themselves on this side of it like mm -hmm. once you finish up so you can still do the same thing that you were doing while you was in it you know that's that's my number one goal so and if i can do that you know i think that's mission accomplished and that'll also give me you know something to shoot for like mm -hmm. I, i'm excited about it you know I, it's not about any money for me i played you know and, and i was blessed enough to you know come out on this end of it but now i want to go in and you know try to help those young men understand mm -hmm. what they're getting into and you know how the decisions that they make uh, gonna affect them for the rest of their lives and you know have a have a big part of you know how they live after football or after sports in, in general. Man, that's beautiful, bro. I mean, shots out to all the black men out there, man, in interjecting themselves into these young kids' lives, man, because they need big brothers, they need guidance, they need people like Mr. Ronnie Brown and myself to just get back and lead and, and guide these kids to the promised land because it is a lot of shots out there in this world. And uh, that's why we created the players now is to, you know, put everything on the forefront for all the players, man. This is for players only, athletes only. And it's, it's, it's a place for you to come and you come get the real from real athletes, people who done done this a long time. And Ronnie B played 10 years in the league. So everything that he said tonight, man, I hope y'all take that and y'all lock that in. We'll be back with the final thought. Huge shots out to my man, Ronnie B, man. I appreciate you coming to the players now tonight to come check out your boy and kick it with me for a minute. Hey man, next week, y'all just gonna check us out. You never know who gonna come through the players now. Man, y'all tune in next week. Holla at you. Y'all know where we at. We ain't stop. Best wings in America, baby. So, every time we get done shooting, man, the players now, I got to come see Wing Stop. And Wing Stop, come see me. Because this shit here right now, you damn lemon peppers, best shit made out here, man. Do y'all hear me? Welcome to Wayne Star. How y'all doing? <laughs> I, I be my little customer service. I get on customer service at Wayne Star. Best Wayne, hey, best Wayne's in the A right here, man. If you feel different, hit me up, man. Hit up the player line, let me know. I'll come see you. I'll come check the wings out right now. I guarantee you ain't hit like Wayne Star. So, you eat your wings, man. You can wash them down. The best thing to wash them down with it. Chicken wing. Go my chicken wing. Go my chicken wing. Go my chicken wing. Chicken wing, 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 chicken wing. Spent all the love on the whole thing. I can't buy bitch a chicken wing. Chicken always on my brain. Buffalo lemon pepper everything. I gotta get the thing, Chris Bay. Chicken wing, chicken wing, chicken wing. Chicken wing, 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 chicken. Spent by the dub on the whole thing. I can't buy bitch a chicken wing. Chicken always on my brain. Buffalo lemon pepper everything. I gotta get the thing, Chris Bay. Chicken wing, chicken wing, chicken wing. A chicken cost more than 